Alright guys, I'm coming to you with a necromancer guide here. I and I wanna show you how I play the necromancer and how I build the necromancer. So let's go to the abilities. So we have we have the most important ability here, which is walking bomb. So I have the walking bomb ring, which boosts the walking bomb's damage. So the you can see the I have increased damage here and whatnot. So the point of the walking bomb is it will dot the enemy, single enemy, and deal damage over time for 10 seconds. And when the enemy when the enemy dies, the dot will actually explode, dealing explosion damage around it. And that you can also preemptively trigger the walking bomb so you can basically explode the walking bomb whenever you want by activating the ability again. But you want to make sure that you upgrade the walking bomb because if walking bomb kills your target the effect spreads to nearby enemies causing a secondary explosion. So basically whenever you explode your walking bomb the walking bomb dot will spread to nearby targets. And those dots, when they expire, they will explode as well, but they won't spread anymore. But this initial spread is enough to deal a shit ton of damage. So this is the ability that deals the most of your damage um, in this with this build. So other Im important abilities from this particular tree are th is Death Siphon. Whenever you kill an enemy, you regain mana and health. This is very important for survivability. You you need this. Also, power of the dead. Every time an enemy dies, you deal you gain 20% damage bonus. So that's good. And with this, I do more en more damage to enemies who has less HP than me. And with this, I do 25% more damage to enemies who have above 50% HP. So very useful. Now for the second tree, you wanna go for Blizzard. Now Blizzard deals damage over 50, some 150% weapon damage per second for 8 seconds. And with the upgrade it will deal even increased damage and it will also freeze enemies instead of chill, chilling them. So you wanna combine Walking Bomb and Blizzard to deal a lot of damage over time in a short period of time. Now, you also want ice armor, because when you stand close to Blizzard, you will gain ice armor, which increases your damage reduction by 50%, and with the damage reduction, you can survive a lot. You can survive basically, basically a sing a uh, hit from Brute without it basically killing you, so that's that's very awesome. Also, you can go for abilities such as Fate Step. Now, what Fate Step does, it it you will teleport to a distance. It's basically a teleport. So you with this you can dodge attacks. So very useful. Also, there's Fate Cloak. And which carries the similar purpose. It will this will instead of teleporting you, it will make you invulnerable for two seconds. So if you have trouble dodging attacks or you wanna get get away fast, pick one of these abilities. Now as and that's that basically for the necromancers. Basically all you need for being effect uh, being an effective necromancer you need both you need both these the blizzard, you need ice armor, you need you need walking bomb with the upgrade, you need dead siphon and the power of the dead. Everything else is pretty much up to you. And you know, I have one point here, so I might actually I might actually Now I wouldn't pick this. My this might sound good. Increases on mana generation rate by 50%. This might be good, but since Blizzard is a channeling ability, it costs you 5 mana per second, and you cannot gain mana back by regenerating if you are channeling spells. So this really wouldn't be useful to you if you are 
using Blizzard all the time, so don't bother picking this. And also, I've seen a lot of necromancers pick this, the spirit mark. While the spirit mark is useful, uh, it deals decent damage, but it does not deal in a, enough damage to be really effective, and it's really cost it costs 50 stamina, so it's really not cheap spell either. But the trick with Spirit Mart is that if a Spirit Mark kills an enemy, it will resurrect it to fight for your side. So that can be useful because the animated mo animated mob can tank enemies for you. So that can be useful. But if you plan to go the Walking Bomb and Blizzard route, you cannot afford the mana to be casting Spirit Mark all the time. So that's why I personally don't use it use spirit mark but if you want to try something else instead of if you want to go without blizzard you can go with spirit mark but to be honest in my opinion blizzard and walking bomb are the most effective way to uh, dominate with the necromancer now while winter grasp and horror are completely optional spells you can replace either of these with either fate step or f or fate cloak but I like to use Winter Grasp or Horror to uh, crowd control approaching enemies. Winter Grasp freezes your, freeze your target for 4 seconds, so it can be useful if you see a single enemy closing in on you. And the Horror panics enemies in a 3 meter area effect, so that's useful when you see multiple enemies uh, attacking you. So keep that in mind when you play the Necromancer. And also, having a good weapon obviously helps. I use Staff of Corruption. There are better staffs, but I like the Staff of Corruption because of the barrier bonus. And especially enemies, enemies like, like the Venatory boss who has a high barrier. This is very useful because this can shred barrier quite fast. But there are other staffs. You can use Sorcerer Staff which has on kill plus 20 match if in my opinion this might even be better than the staff of corruption but i like to use different staffs once in a while i don't really care re really care about the staffs uh, i do have staff of the void which has a chance to grant walking fortress but the necromancer since i am pretty much using a lot of line of i'm utilizing line of sight so i'm basically basically putting my dots and then running away so I don't really benefit from walking fortress that much in a way that an arcane warrior could benefit benefit from walking fortress so let's see I obviously have the uh, tier 2 armor so that's pretty much a must if you wanna play perilous difficulty and I also have a gul'dan reduction amulet pretty much must for all characters in my opinion I use a ring of staggering because uh, the sorceress doesn't, the necromancer does not have a good critical chance. So giving him 5% crit ring wouldn't really benefit her that much because I wouldn't crit often either way, with or without the ring. But with the 10% stagger, I can actually stagger enemies with my staff, so that can actually be quite useful. Especially if they're closing in on you. And I also have the enhanced walking bomb ring, which allows my walking bomb to do. 30% extra damage, so this is pretty awesome. You can, if you have a blizzard ring, you can use that as well. Now, I also have range defense ring. This is also very important, especially if you are being attacked by ranged mobs. This might save your life. But that's it for the necromancer. Let's find us a game and show you how it works in action. Alright, I found, us, found me a game and... I've this is some perilous difficulty we'll with the necromancer and, and this should Our be fun, quite interesting in indeed. So, looks the like my mate here is an arcane warrior. Surprise, surprise, under arcane warrior is flavor of the month. Basically, whenever you join a perilous game, there is bound to be at least one arcane warrior. A moment to breathe. We must use it wisely. So, yeah. Plan or no plan, if you die, I get your call. We should be fine as long as the Argarian warrior knows what he's doing. Amazing. All right. 
We received an item. Oh yeah, it was the locked room there. Because the, thir the third player went to open. Good synergy with the Arcan Warriors pull of the abyss, so... As you can see, the walking bomb is spreading everywhere and the explosion is hit hitting everything because of the pull of the abyss there, so... Nice. Very good indeed. Nice. I'm gonna fa wait for the warrior to pull. Because he is gonna be my tank here. As you can see, it's working quite well. Nice. So it looks from so from the look of it, the arcane warrior does know what he's doing. So this should be quite smooth. Did anyone try that hand they had at camp yesterday? Quite smooth run, no target. problem. A grave threat with an enemy that must be no problem with it whatsoever. At least it should. At least it should be no problem. Kill everything. Oh, we received another arcane warrior. Surprise, surprise. Not surprised at all. Everyone likes everyone likes some arcane warriors. Certainly. Gonna drop them. Please are there. Slow enemies and possibly freeze them. Hmm. Gonna throw a walking bomb there, explode it, place a blizzard. What's enemies die? Nice. Can't open that door, so that's unfortunate. Out of my way, Katari. Stay behind this wall to avoid the archers however I can. And it worked quite well. So yeah, the key to playing the Necromancer is basically dot the enemies with both walking bomb and blizzard and then hide. Basically. You can use horror and winter scraps scraps to pretty much stop enemies that are attacking you. Like that guy! Ooh. That would have hurt if I didn't have the ice armor on. But luckily I had it on so I didn't receive a lot of damage there. By the big Look guy. The, the big guy can actually almost one-shot you. So you wanna... So you wanna watch them closely. Nice. As you saw, I use Winter's Grasp there to protect myself, freeze the enemies and so on. Let's see how the... The Arcane Warrior handles this. Put a blizzard here, go, go stand on it. And panic the enemies there as well. 
Then stop the blizzard. Nice, good pull. So far I'm liking this. I'm liking this arcane warrior we have here. Why are those two dying over there? Looks like we have to go get him. That sucks. <laughs> Looks like we had a rogue join our team while I while we were basically cleaning up, so we were already quite far away from those guys. Nice. But luckily the arcane warrior definitely knows what he what he is doing, so this is going quite smooth. No problemo. I couldn't say say I couldn't say the same for the Katari and the other guy, whoever that was, an archer. It's going final level before the before the last event. Oh, looks like those motherfuckers almost killed me right there. Two stealth guys, stalkers. Not a good combo, if you ask me. I thought myself dead for sure. They must still be out there. I can't believe if they're still out there. Look over there. Nice, looks like the archer is actually on his tier 1 armor, so not really useful because he is probably gonna get one shot or something. Well, Imperialist difficulty you probably get one shot regardless, so it doesn't not it doesn't really matter. But it kinda helps out still. To have at least the better armor, you know. I'm gonna go help the Arcane Warrior, even though he necessarily doesn't really require any help. Nice, hopefully now we can actually go to the treasure room, or can we? No. Alright, let's not go to the red treasure room. No. No, I'm curious. Ah. Boom, 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 boom. Thank you. Can we now open I'll the treasure room? What you did for me today. I I think it's safe to make my Yes, way we out. can. Make a guide you in this dreadful place and praise the Inquisition. Well, fuck it. No. You know. No, I'm curious. Why the? F <laughs> we could have. <laughs> why did? <laughs> well, fuck it. Doesn't really matter. I don't understand because. Well, he's not twenty. I ex I expected the Arcane Warrior to be level twenty, and. I would expect if he was level 20 he would want money, so he would want to open the treasure rooms, but 
He's not level 20, so I guess he rather wants the experience. Which is fine by me, because I kinda want experience too, so I'm not really hell-bent on opening all the treasure rooms, but... You know... It would be helpful. Helpful. Oh, don't block me! Fuck you! Whoever that guy was there who blocked me, I almost died because of you. Couldn't run away from the fucking... Couldn't run away from the fucking brute. Keep dotting enemies and... Ooh, Stalker. Not good, not good. Oh, where did you come from? Where the... What the... Where the hell do these guys... Keep coming from? Why aren't you attacking the fucking Arcane Warrior? He's right there, you know. Leave me alone. Let's drop this here, I'm gonna spread the walking bomb again. Kill this guy. Nice. What the hell, where did... It must be the pull of the abyss, somehow it's bugging the enemies who are being pulled somehow, so... That's weird. Thankfully the Arcan Warrior is keeping making sure that we are not attacked by any random random stragglers. Nice. This should be almost over. The archer got pwned. Boom, boom, boom. Would you die? Nice. So that went rather smoothly. The informant is safe. And thanks and to the arcane warrior the and pull of the what abyss, it could have be been forgotten. a lot harder without him. But we were quite successful, so I'm happy with that. So let's see how well we did actually, overall. Come on, show me. Yeah, obviously the Argan Warrior. Immortal? What does that mean? It pro probably means that I didn't die a single time. That's probably what it is. So yeah, I didn't... I didn't do badly there. So I was quite happy with that game, so... See you next time.